on chess for those of you who are new. So uh, this tutorial is for complete beginners uh, who have ended up with a saxophone and want to make a noise out of it. Or um, it occurred to me, I should probably mention, for, for those of you who are just kind of interested in like putting the feelers out and maybe watching a little bit about how you make a sound out of the instrument but haven't purchased an instrument yet, um, or just borrowing a friend's and maybe giving it a go and then thinking of buying one themselves. Uh, I would recommend, for those of you in the UK, I would massively recommend sax.co.uk. They're really good guys. They've got a shop in London if you want to go in. It's a magical place. It's like a sweet shop for me. Um, so, so yeah, they're good guys. Uh, the sax are really reasonable. They will deliver. You um, do want to know a little bit more about which saxophone's right for you, um, I will do a video on buying your first saxophone. So, uh, let's make a sound out of it. So, we've got our strap at the right length, having watched a previous video about how to put the saxophone together, and everything is aligned, our reed is in perfect position and has been sucked, which you do every single time you play, by the way, that's not just because it's a brand new reed, you always suck the reed beforehand. Uh, and the reason being, if we're going to set it into motion, it's going to vibrate. And if you imagine, uh, like a, a wet leaf and a dry leaf in autumn, scrunch them up, the wet leaf is more likely to bounce back. So if we are giving this some movement, hopefully giving it a suck is going to give it that little bit more flexibility that it needs. We're all set to go. Um, and hopefully, if everything's in place, we should end up being able to make a sound out of it. <laughs> So let me show you how I did that. Okay, so the, the reed has a lot of flexibility. If you're too far near the tip, you might find that you're not making any sound at all. Like, I'm blowing, why is there no sound coming out? It's because you've pushed so hard that you're sealing this little gap that you need here on the end. Vice versa, you might find if you put loads of the mouthpiece in your mouth, the reed isn't vibrating the way it should do, and it ends up very honky. So if I was to play that tune again. Not so good. Um, and this is thousands of pounds worth of instrument. It can still make a horrible honky sound if you've got the wrong embouchure, which is your mouth shape. So unfortunately, I'm a bit of a biter, so you can probably see on the end of my sats here where I've got the mouthpiece patch. These are quite useful. I'll, I'll talk about um, various accessories and, and products that I, I couldn't live without for the sax in, in another video. So check out my other videos if you have time. Um, so yeah, you're on my little teeth marker there. So that's where your, your top should be. Now on the bottom, you can probably even see faintly from where I've had a little bit of lipstick on, this is where your lip should be. Now I'm using my lip as a cushion against my teeth. So we talked in that first video when we were putting the saxophone together about how precious the reed was and how fragile it is. So you don't want to then just bite it in half, having been so careful about putting it on the thing. So we cushion those teeth with our bottom lip. That doesn't mean you can hollow half your lip, it's just a little tiny bit, just so you're not putting your teeth directly at it. Top doesn't matter. Some people do find that they find it's a bit more um, comfortable to actually do the top as well. That, that's fine as long as you've got enough strength on the edges. What you don't want is you've got yourself into this position and then you can't keep the edges strong so you end up with air coming out the sides when you go to blow. So I'd recommend you try first of all with your teeth touching the top of the mouthpiece and covering your bottom lip. Um, ideally you don't want to do like this, lip against the reed and here. <laughs> Um, a lot of pop players play like that, and it's great because it's really loud, but I think you ideally want to learn and build the strength in this position, and then once you've got strong enough muscles at the side, then you could go into that more poppy zone. I still don't use that, that shape, but I have seen a lot of pop players do it, and it does sound pretty cool. Um, okay, so we've got the shape. Um, I'm going to place our bottom lip here, cut teeth ready to go, and seal the edges. Now, big thing. You don't want to breathe through your nose. Um, really, really difficult habit to kick. If you've started doing that, you, it's because it's quite instinctive. You've blocked your mouth, haven't you? You put something in it. So I, I'm quite happy to talk with it in my mouth. But um, I, you know, it's an instinct. If you put something in your mouth, you just breathe through your nose. So you've got to force yourself to, despite the fact that you've got this in your mouth, still got loads of room at the sides, 
take your breath through the side. On sa. Um, start off with just maybe one key down. So you've got your thumb on the black spot and one key down. Start off with something like that. That means that your air is escaping immediately as soon as you get to that second key there. So your tubing is actually quite long. The more fingers you've got down, the kind of more air and support you need behind it. So this is a good place to start. And we're gonna take that air. Now, what we're not gonna do, again, I know you're desperate to make a sound. We're gonna get there. Don't you worry. Um, what you don't want to do is take the air to your cheeks. You don't want to end up like hamster. <laughs> Sounds a bit rubbish. <laughs> Hopefully you can hear the difference. The uh, When you've got the hamster cheeks, it's very flat. Uh, similar kind of thing. You don't want to take air up here. So you don't want to kind of gasp and feel as much as you can. Shoulders up because it's just not going to travel as far, you know, if it's coming to your chest. You want a strong flow of air, and the best way you can do that is by taking it to the pit of your tummy. So imagine you're like a pyramid, and you're trying to fill the greater part of it, the lower area. That's what you're trying to do. So it's worth actually keeping your shoulders down, like consciously keeping your shoulders down. It will stop you from doing that. You're trying to take to the pit of your stomach. And when you're first learning, make sure you take that air slowly, so that'll avoid this feeling as well of it coming to your chest. So you take your air in slowly, ready to play, even if the that is in your mouth. And blow. Preferably for as long as you can. You might find it does a bit of... You might find a bit of that at the beginning, or even just a... Like really loud sound. Obviously, you learn to control it. I would highly recommend after this. Well, I would recommend you watch the video on how to take it apart and how to clean it. That's really helpful. But also watch some of my tutorials on long notes and trying to get rid of wobbles. And I've got loads of warm up exercises there. So check out some of those on um, how to get a nice, strong, pure sound. I won't take up too much time talking about that today in this video. So hopefully we just about made a sound out of it. Woohoo! Um, if you haven't, don't worry, <laughs> give it another go. Bearing in mind the, the things I said, not being, not squeezing too hard and not being um, too far on the mouthpiece, keeping those edges sealed. Ideally, um, let's say we've got three different shape mounts. We've got R, U, and E. If you go to E, that's when you're going to start squidging it. You want more of an ooh sound. If you go ah, oh, that's when it goes a bit flat. And you'll find that you're struggling to keep these edges strong. So ooh is your best shape. So you're kind of blowing your kiss. That's your kind of shape. And hopefully you've just made your first sound. Virtual high five. <laughs>